the fragile concept of time. You know, we live in an advanced society where we don't even think about checking the time. Okay, all of us have dinguses in our pockets that are synced to GPSs and like down to the second, we know what time it is. Well, I bet none of you look at your old yellowed quartz kitchen clock and think, oh mate, 300 years ago, that would have been a super weapon to help you control the world. Cause like in the 1700s, mate, when like, you know, boats were made out of wood and not made out of old Holden Commodores, like it was actually like really hard to travel across continents hey and like actually knowing what the time was was fully sick because then you could be like mate now i know kind of where i am because like, i know the time hey but like you can't have a pendulum clock on a ship mate because it's like you know at the boat and she's all like rocking don't come knocking <laughs> hey paddle van so like, you imagine the first person who could figure out how to get a clock to like work on a ship would kind of rule the world eh <laughs> oh it turns out it was englishman I, oh yep no that makes sense if you're ever hopping into a time machine Bring the kitchen clock with you. <laughs> My favorite detail about clocks is that, mate, you can get one of these dirty little idiots for <laughs> like 20 bucks. And like, it even tells the date and the day. Oh, and it runs on the same battery for about seven years. <laughs> it's even water resistant. These have they've been out forever. But watch this, mate, big fan. Like as a kid, always wore a watch. Then I started playing the drums. Then I didn't really wear a watch because you know, the business. And then like, I got the first Apple watch and then Apple watches made me hate the watch again. <laughs> but I guess this is just what happens when you go down the rabbit hole with gadgets and things and the algorithm just starts trying to piece together what it thinks you're gonna like. And then it spits this at me. When I saw this guy, I just loved the design. I didn't actually know what its purpose was until I actually did more digging. And you're getting a clue in right off the front, mate. Look, Braille. I honestly have no experience with Braille and for some reason it's always really exciting when it turns up. Uh, it's really amazing seeing people who know how to actually like fluently read it and they just glance their fingers across stuff and just read sentences. I'm so jealous. It's so cool. Well, this is a wristwatch for the sight impaired. Mm. The Bradley E1. Comes with these really slim books. I'll come back to the book. Mate, here's the watch. So it was the design of the face that caught me. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. What is this, like a Tokyo Flash watch where the idea is that you can't read it? Go on, tell me what the time is. That's right. It's equalizer o'clock. But once this was explained to me how it works, this is like the most genius way to tell time without looking. She's a really straight ahead kind of thing. Look, you pull the crown out and look, you can adjust the time and you see there are two little ball bearings. Do you see the boys? This outer ball bearing is hours, the inner one is minutes. So just by looking at the ball bearings, you can see it's quarter past 12, mate. Now the wild thing about braille is when I close my eyes and feel this, I can't really discern anything at all, you know, because I just haven't practiced it. I'm not, I don't know what I'm looking for. And so people who read Braille are going to be very sensitive with their fingers and what they can feel. The way this works is, look, the 12 is the triangle. Each quarter has like a longer piece and you can literally just feel where the hours and minutes are. <laughs> so I can feel that. I can check the time without looking and like I'm a dingus and have no training at all. This must be like a giant kitchen clock to those who can read braille. Now, there are many watches for people who are visually impaired. Most of them yell. I like yelling. That's so intrusive and, you know, potentially embarrassing. Imagine you're in a quiet space. You need to know what time it is. You can catch your taxi, you can get to a, a whatever, and you press the thing and it goes, Day the time is 6.20! There's so many things that we all take for granted, like just being able to casually check the time and go do what you need to do. And yet, you can just silently feel this and know what time it is. But the thing that that blows me away about this guy is that you know they do have braille watches which looks awesome but i'd have to learn braille to understand how to use that and yet they've made a watch that's accessible by touch that i can look at at a glance with my perfectly fine vision and then they've done it in like a visually appealing way that i really like the look of it's just a big chunk of metal this thing and it's like a wearable fidget cube oh yeah, go uh, hang on I gotta go back. <laughs> the tolerances are so satisfying. Like the magnets are so strong. The way that you reset it is you just shake the watch. Boom, it's back. This is so clever. Cause like the entire mechanism is so standard. Like to set this up and the user, it's just a watch, nothing more. It's different looking. And that's what I like about it. I mean, it's a bit chunk, but mate, try and talk to a G-Shock. I mean, it's why I like me Casio. Look at that guy. It's like nothing on your wrist. Band is really easy to adjust. 
It gets on there good. Uh, no rubbing or pinching problems, which I've had with other watches. And it looks like just four little dinger screws to get to your bat boy in there. How many watches can you just play with the hands <laughs> when it's this satisfying to do? My favorite scenario I can think of this is like, you know when like an activity starts slowing down, it just starts getting a bit boring, happens all the time. That's when you have this moment of, oh, what time it is and how rude it is just to glance at a watch when, you know, you can feel that things are slowing down a bit. <laughs> you can just have your hands behind your back and just go like, Oh man, this thing's going for ages. <laughs> like, this is the most candid watch you can wear. I don't know if it's water resistant or something. Hmm, like, does this corrode? Cause that'll mess up how smoothly these little ball bearings move. Hmm, maybe the books will tell us. We can finally have a read. Braille on the front. I, mean, I love the inclusion of both. I mean, because I bought it because of the design, not even knowing that it was for the visually impaired. Yep, it's hours and minutes. On you, Bradley. Oh, wow. Oh, there's a bomb diffuser. Then he won medals? Mate, I had to do some research on Brad, and um, dude's a, a stinking legend. Lieutenant in the Navy, served in Afghanistan, you know, dealing with like IEDs and explosives, which is terrifying. And while attempting to help victims of another bombing, like seeing that kind of stuff and then running in after it, he lost his eyes stepping on an IED. Like shattered eardrum, the whole thing. That's, you know, talking about patching his life back together and you know like how he wasn't good at anything anymore dressing and color matching putting toothpaste on a toothbrush while he was in the naval academy he was captain of the swim team eventually being part of the u.s paralympic swimming team where um gold medals gold medals and is the current world record holder for the 100 meter freestyle brad was already this heroic legend before he just became another heroic legend. I wasn't expecting this kind of story on a watch that I just found really pretty and interesting. Success comes from within. If you want it, you go and get it. So on your bread, like that's insanely inspiring and you're literally like a living legend. Mate, I tip my Vegemite to you. And then a very conventional quick start here. Yeah, pull the crown out. It's a watch, set it and use it. Hmm, it doesn't, it doesn't say if it's waterproof. Ah! Water resistance, not intended for submersion. Well, at least they do say. I was thinking the, the lovely roly roly action, you know, would be susceptible to <laughs> gunk making a not so roly roly. I love me a good clever design, using materials and techniques that are already on this planet and then just tweaked in a way that just makes them <laughs> genius. Uh, you know, they're not that cheap, but you know, it doesn't stink. Aren't we sick of buying cheap rubbish? <laughs> get something that's worth keeping. But just such a cool design, how like I can enjoy it and use it purely on its like face value merits. And the fact that this amazing looking design actually has uses to people that really gives some folks like a big thing of freedom. Like, you know, this modern world runs to the, the millisecond. And maybe there's a bunch of you guys out there who know someone who would just do a backflip for something like this. And well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because my $1 a month, I do extra videos. Although before that, there are extra videos on garbage time, my car thing, and the drum thing, which is my drum thing, and I do float plane, float plane streaming like five times a week playing the drums. But $1 a month, my extra dank pods. I haven't worn it for a bit because of the Bradley, but uh, you know, I'm gonna talk about my G-Shock. <laughs> I got this recently. It's super neat. Stay, mate. And, and like, I like it and I wanna talk about it, so I will. So, thanks so much, mate. I'll see you all next time. I've got to step you through this Frank ending bit, guys. This is a good one. So, um, it's feeding time for the big noodle, and you can see she's in a smelly, smelly box. She could be in a different part of the enclosure when it's time to feed her, but in this case, it's in a stinky box, and usually a stinky box feeding just involves just teeth coming out of the hole. Well, I wanted to know what her warm-up routine was. I wanted to know what was going on in there, so I was recording with one of her cameras. Oh, look at that, mate. The door's open. The noodle is aware. Look at that. Frank's done a move. Now that's one of her tasty treats, which is a stinking wet rat. <laughs> and now, let's see what Frank does. Oh yeah, that took a bit to catch on. And um, she bit the curtains. Yep. Uh, you know, let, let's just watch that again. Uh, I mean, let's just pause here. Let's keep in mind that the rat is this way and the curtains are over here. And if you need proof that Frank's not all that clever, 
let it be this. And uh, I really do appreciate this face that she makes here, where even she realizes that this is very, very embarrassing and be very unfortunate if it was being recorded.